Hey everyone, this is Tanya here at the Greater Sydney Local Land Services Demonstration Farm. And just behind me, we have our lovely permanent pollinator patch. Today, we're going to be talking about alternative pollinators. Now, historically in Australia, honeybees have been our key crop pollinator, and it's easy to see why. They're abundant and they're commercially available. Unfortunately, with the arrival of Varroa mite here on Australia's shores, our experiences overseas suggest that honeybee pollination will go down as honeybee populations begin to decline. So it's really important that we start to think about alternative crop pollinators that we can attract into our crops to take up some of that slack. When we talk about alternative pollinators, we're talking about any insect that's capable of pollinating our crops. And so this can include native bees, many fly species, beetles, butterflies, and moths. However, bees and flies are our major crop pollinators here in Australia, and so we're gonna focus on those today. In Australia, we are really lucky to have more than 2,000 species of native bee. Many of those species have been observed pollinating crops, and so they're a good target for inviting into our crop environments. Since bees live in nests, it's really important to make sure they have suitable nesting resources near the crop environment. Most of our smaller native bee species will only fly a few hundred meters to get food. So those nesting resources need to be within a few hundred meters of the crop if we want the bees to do the pollination. The vast majority of our native bee species actually live in the ground. And so they need regions of mulch-free, clear ground in which they can make their tunnels. Other species of native bee will live in hollow reeds. And so things like raspberry canes, lantana canes, and grapevines provide suitable nesting resources. But again, these need to be within 100 meters of the crop. Stingless bees, which live in colonies, need hollows to nest in. And so again, it's important to have as many older trees around, which may have these hollows, so that stingless bees can nest close to the crop environment. Just like people, bees need a balanced diet in order to be healthy. And so making sure that we have a variety of flowers planted in and around the crop environment can support native bee nutrition and ensure that they are around for most of the year. Because most of our native bees are active over the summer, as the weather months get cooler and cooler, we start to see fewer native bees. But that's when the flies really take over. We have over 30,000 species of fly here in Australia. Not all of them are crop pollinators, but some of the major groups like the blowflies, the houseflies, the muscadae, and the syrphids or hoverflies can be really important crop pollinators. Hoverflies in particular are amazing in crop environments. That's because the adults are effective pollinators, while the larvae or the young are predators of aphids, and so can help perform pest control in the crop environment. To support hoverflies in crops, it's really important to have a variety of flowers, especially species that flower over the cooler months because hoverflies are active all year round and in fact often start to peak in the very early spring. Since the larvae of hoverflies feed primarily on aphids, it's important to be very mindful about how we use insecticides in and around the crop environment. And having some areas of native bushland, which are pesticide free, can help support those hoverfly larvae. Drone flies are a type of syrphid, so they're related to the hoverflies we've already talked about. Unlike hoverflies, drone fly larvae actually live in stagnant water and in decaying matter. So again, they can be a little bit difficult to support directly in crop environments, but if you have a wetland nearby or anywhere where water is accumulating, you can support those drone fly larvae. Another really important fly pollinator in Australian crops are the blowflies. These are often quite plump, iridescent, beautiful flies that can be found throughout the country. Because the larvae of blowflies feed on carrion and feces, it can be a little bit difficult to support them directly in crop environments. However, again, having areas of native bushland where those sorts of natural ecosystem processes are happening can be really beneficial. Blowflies, as adults will feed on nectar and pollen, and so can be important for moving pollen from flower to flower and causing pollination. So one of the most important things for pollinators is flowers. Flowers provide them with all the nutrition that they need. So it's really important to make sure that you have a variety of flowers planted in and around the crop environment. 
So I'm here in our pollinator bed where we've planted a variety of flowers to cater to the needs of a variety of native pollinators. We've aimed for a bunch of different colors and a lot of different shapes. So you can see the salvia behind me is this beautiful bluish purple color, which tends to be very attractive to many of our native bees, especially our blue banded bees and our teddy bear bees. But because of its shape, it can be a little bit difficult for some of the native flies to access nectar out of the salvias. So in addition, we've planted a variety of open flowers like the Elysium and the Brachioscome daisies, which have nectar that's much more available to the shorter mouth parts of many native flies. We've also aimed for colors like white and purple, which we know are attractive to many native fly species. In terms of where to put flowers, it depends a little bit on the layout of your crop. Flowers can be planted between rows, or they can be planted along the edges of crops or at the end of rows. Really, more flowers is always better than fewer flowers, so put them wherever you can. But remember, they need to be as close to the crop as possible so that pollinators will be encouraged to pollinate your crop. We've put our pollinator patch right on the edge of our vegetable farm, close enough that our pollinators will be able to pollinate our crops. Here at the demonstration farm, we've chosen to use both native and non-native attractive flowers. The reason for this is that whilst many of our native bees prefer native flowers, Many of them are generalists and will feed on a wide variety of flower types, whether or not they're native. So we've chosen to do both just to increase the diversity of the patch. We've also planted shrubs as windbreaks, but these shrubs are flowering and so they also provide extra resources for our pollinators. It's a really great way to start to think about how we can incorporate more native flowers in our crop environment. In terms of which flower species to plant, there are a number of great guides online that can help guide that decision-making process. It's also okay to experiment. Have a look at which insects are being attracted to flowers in and around your crop and plant more of those. So to sum up, we want to attract pollinators to our crops and we can do that by having lots of flowers and by being mindful about how we use insecticides in the crop environment. I hope those helpful tips will help you to attract pollinators to your crop environment.